Welcome back to my garage. I'm taking a little break from troubleshooting the brute force prototype. I'm gonna do a little fun project, something I talked about a while ago. Got my Tomos engine here out of my NSU Quickly 57, converted to Tomos, a Tomos heart. And the Tomos transplant sitting in the NSU Quickly will receive a four cylinder, four stroke, small nitro engine in place of the cylinder. That's the plan anyway. I made a video about this engine a while ago and there's a link in the description to where you can get one and to that video. Video. V v video. W World video. Is that right? <laughs> I said I probably threw the box of parts for this engine away and I still can't find it. A huge thanks to Henrik Banschen which donated a couple of clutches which I'm missing and Basically a complete engine without some bits and pieces, but a huge thanks Because I think this will make the project possible now the Java I got will be purposed for something else While waiting for the JB welded clutch to cure, let's see if this thing starts still. I haven't actually started it since I made that video uh, assembling it. Got it hooked up to my uh, RC car fuel tank, water in this tank, battery, glow plugs, and a starter button. So let's see, let's see how it behaves if it starts. I think the sound of this will be awesome in a moped. 
let's hope the crankshaft doesn't break it's only supported at each end here and uh, many have broken them simple plan i'm just going to make an adapter plate and fit the engine like this belt or chain drive and reduce it to two to one take some measurements and uh, make that adapter plate The adapter plate, I made the radii in the corners too big, so I'll have to do some filing for the, the block to fit in there. We have a problem. This flywheel does not seat against the bearing, which I thought it seats against the axle. There's a step in here and that's not in my design. Here's the design, by the way. It's a sprocket for a bicycle chain, BMX chain. If I tighten it, the axle shifts and everything binds up. I'll recess one side here so that it just clamps but doesn't push or pull on the crankshaft and uh, we'll try we'll try it there's not much torque here anyway and i'll use some loctite Welding is uh, one of those things where you can't go anywhere without a lot of practice and I lack the practice needed to be a good welder. Slowly getting there though. There's a minor problem with the adapter plate. I can't fit a wrench to tighten these bolts when the engine is mounted. Of course, because it's an enclosed area. I have to machine off this wall to get access.
First test, can the starter motor turn the whole assembly, the engine and the gearbox together? And the answer is... Absolutely. Perfect. This recess meant for the carburetor is a perfect match for a tiny fuel tank. Now this won't get you far. If this works and is usable, I will switch this out for kind of a float chamber, just like a carb, but without the carb parts, just a float chamber. And use a bigger fuel tank to feed this, this float chamber. Second test, can it turn the whole gearbox assembly under its own power? I mean, there's no point in putting this in the moped frame if it can't even turn the engine. I haven't got the water hooked up, so just a short test, just to see how it behaves. Like with everything I do, <laughs> to see how it behaves. <coughs> Took up some water and uh, run it for a little bit longer. If you haven't played with this nitro stuff, just uh, regular gasoline, there's a fairly potent smell and it burns your eyes and throat, even from this tiny thing, at least when you're so close. I forgot to turn the starter motor off. <laughs> Does not feel like the most powerful thing in the world. I think we'll just put it in the frame and see what happens. Spared you from all the boring wiring, but it's hooked up now. I've even got a fan on the radiator. I'm kind of excited about uh, testing this thing. <laughs> no clue if it will even pull its own weight. We'll find out now. With a Tomo cylinder on there, this was actually my daily commute for about half a year. It was terrible. This is a completely rigid bike. There should be front suspension, but I decided it was too high in the front and uh, I just removed the springs. So it's riding on the bump stops in here. And it's really flimsy, like even more flimsy than a normal bicycle. And the rear tire, many of the spokes are uh, loose and I can't tighten them because then they snap. And a couple have snapped already. I have zip tied some of them together to, or I did that, this is years ago. And, um, and this seat, that wooden seat, which looks cool, it is too wide. The foot pegs are missing now, but they should be here. And that's too low, so it, it kind of pinches your thighs and uh, and and or did I mention my daily commute was about 30 miles each way so uh, say 25 miles into that ride to work I had to take a break because both my legs were completely numb from being pinched by the seat never fixed it though because it looked cool <laughs> the headlight has a little flashlight in it which there's and there's still battery there's still light in there. <laughs> Not much of a light though. Enough talk. Let's fuel up, start it and see how it behaves.
not much of a success yet. It dies off suddenly. Maybe it's too rich. I'll lean it down some. Richer. Better. I'll give it a little more. I was becoming optimistic, it was pulling its own weight, including me, and the first gear even locked up, so it was rideable, but uh... The other end of the crankshaft is not turning, I snapped the crank, many people warned me, snap the crank. This crank is just end supported, so that's how it goes. Short lived fun. Cool engines, maybe not for mounting in mopeds. See you next time.